It was a big day for Johns Hopkins at Junietta. Blue Jays opened the scoring on the short pass from Robbie Mady to Bob Garazio. A Ken Kaiser field goal closed the Juniata deficit to 7-3, but after that it was all Blue Jays. Here, John Montero finds the end zone to make it 14-3. Mady rolls left, hooks in the left corner of the end zone for Garazio, who pulls it in to make it 21-3. Mady and Durazio teamed up for a third touchdown pass, this one covering 62 yards and the route was on. Mady's fifth touchdown pass of the day. Jared Beekman covers 33 yards and his sixth and final touchdown of the day, five yard pass to Dan Wadicum. Mady ended up with a career high 408 yards and the Blue Jays went on to route the Eagles 65 to 10. Dickinson and Franklin Marshall squared off in Lancaster for the Conestoga Wagon Trophy. FNM opened the scoring on the 73-yard punt return for a touchdown by Jordan Zachary, the second time in two weeks that the junior has taken a punt to the house for six points. FNM extended its lead to 14-0 on this swing pass from E.J. Schneider to Zachary covering 14 yards. Dickinson came right back on this pass from Colin L to Colin Rogers, covering 31 yards to close the deficit to 14-7. FNM extended its lead to two scores on this 30-yard pass from Schneider to Tim Muller. Dickinson came right back. Anel looked right side for Eric Ando, 25 yards to make it a 21-14 game and then the play of the game. With Dickinson driving, Chris Stefano steps in front of this pass and returns it 85 yards for a touchdown to give Franklin and Marshall a 28-14 lead. Running back A.J. Coleman would add the final touchdown as Franklin and Marshall went on to defeat Dickinson 35-14. Versinus traveled to the Lehigh Valley to take on Moravian. Jason Golder scored on that short run to give the Bears an early lead. Then Kevin Monahan teamed with Darius Jones on this 41 touchdown pass, and her sign had a 14 0 advantage. Then Monahan eludes the rush and finds a streaking Josh Williams 75 yards to give the Bears a three score lead. Monahan threw for 330 yards and four touchdowns in the first half, and then the defense also scored points as Tim Rafter falls on this loose ball to give her sign a 42 10 lead. But the Greyhounds didn't quit. Here, Chris Negron takes the handoff up the middle, kicks to the right side, and goes 29 yards for a touchdown. Then, Richard Kugel picks off this Monaghan pass and takes it 35 yards to the house, and quickly it's a 42-24 game. Then, Robbie Moyer scores on the read option 4 yards, and it's a 42-30 game. But Golderer stops the Greyhound run, on this 15-yard touchdown. Put the Bears back in front by three scores. Chris Negron scored his second touchdown of the day on this 50-yard run, but it wasn't enough for Sinus went on to defeat Moravian 52-44. Susquehanna got off to a fast start against Muhlenberg here. Jared Minori sacks quarterback Nick Palladino in the end zone, and the Crusaders were off to a 5-0 lead. But the game changed on this punt return by Muhlenberg Jr. Cody Geyer. Geyer finds some running room up the middle, kicks to the right side, and takes it 82 yards before being tackled by Susquehanna punter T.J. Morton. That set up this short touchdown run by Kevin Van Lahr, and Muhlenberg had a 7-5 lead. Duke Hyacinth scored a Susquehanna touchdown, blocking this Connor Winner punt and ending up with the ball in the end zone. But after that, it was all mules. Van Lahr scores his second touchdown of the day. Mike Harris takes a handoff around the right side and finds pay dirt. And finally, Nick Palladino calls his own number. Muhlenberg goes on to defeat Susquehanna 38-18. Gettysburg opened the scoring against McDaniel in this short Eddie Hutchins run. The Green Terror answered right back. Joe Rollins takes a pitch left and scores on this 22-yard scamper. Bullets come right back. Peter Fessenden 
takes the option pitch around right end, put the bullets in front 14 to 7. Then quarterback Zach Miller pitches to Chris Amico and goes around the left side for another bullet touchdown. Joe Rollins takes the Wildcat snap right up the middle for his second score of the day. But Zach Miller teams up with Alec Paselli in this 25-yard scoring pass to give Gettysburg a 30-14 lead at the half. Miller extends Gettysburg's advantage on this quarterback keeper. Joe Rollins keeps McDaniel in the game here, breaking free for a third touchdown of the day. Rollins ended up with 269 rushing yards on the afternoon. But Gettysburg had the answer for Rollins. Miller looks deep for Aiden Twer. The senior pulls in and goes 61 yards for the touchdown. McDaniel scored his final touchdown on this Ryan Yamada to Sean Montgomery pass. With a 26-yard run by Eddie Hutchins, capped the scoring, Gettysburg went on to defeat McDaniel 50-28. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle and today's Coach's Corner with Moravian head coach Jeff Puxin. Coach, uh, off to an 0-5 start but showed a lot of fight in the second half against an undefeated or science team scoring 34 second half points. Do you feel this uh, was a turnaround for your team? I do, Steve. I think we grew up a lot. We're playing a lot of young kids. You know, if you look at our two deep, there's a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, um, you know, that we're playing. Uh, you know, we have a small senior class, um, real good kids in, in the senior junior class. But what we did grow up, we gained a lot of confidence in that second half uh, against our assignments. It was great. We fed off each other's emotions, both offensively and defensively. Uh, it increased the production of our special teams at the same time. So it, it was a great effort. Uh, by the kids in the second half. My, I mean, my hat goes off to them being down 42-10 at one point. Uh, I, and, I, and I said it before, 9 out of 10 teams probably would have folded the 10. Our guys didn't even look at the scoreboard. It didn't phase them, and, and they played hard for those 30 minutes. And, and we had great production, so, so it was great to see. There was no doubt about it. Let's talk about your quarterback, Robbie Moyer. He's had 300-yard rushing games in the last four outings and uh, is the real leader of the offense. Absolutely. The kids look up to Robbie. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I said it in the preseason. I mean, when, when you see Robbie and his attitude, his character, his energy, uh, he's the guy you want to draft first and anything you're doing in life. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, the future successes that, that he'll have when he leaves us is going to be unbelievable because of the kind of kid he is. But he manages the football game real well from the quarterback position. Uh, he understands the game. We always talk about a high football IQ, and Robbie certainly has that. And, and the kids rally around him. So, uh, you know, certainly I keep telling Robbie every Monday morning, well, I ask him first how he feels after carrying the ball that many times. But he, he's doing a great job. And, and like I said, I think, you know, as long as we can, uh, you know, make sure he's not absorbing a lot of those hits he takes when he's rushing the ball, uh, he's going to find that he has a great five weeks ahead of him, uh, you know, for the rest of the year this year. You talked about a number of young players that uh... – are, are getting a lot of experience right now, including freshman running back Chris Negron. 164 yards rushing against her sinus, two touchdowns. Showed a lot of, some good breakaway speed on those two scoring runs. Talk about his play. Sure. I mean, Chris, we knew he was going to be a great player for us when we started recruiting him. Uh, you know, we thought he had some good explosiveness, could help us in the return game. Uh, we, we've had a doubt right away when we got him into camp. We saw that in the return game. Uh, but certainly he's progressed every single week. I do think this was a breakout game for him against her sinus. He carried the ball with confidence. He, he, he read things very well in his cuts um, and exploded through some holes and some blocks um, that we didn't see in those four, four weeks. And I think the four weeks – you know, just took him a little while to grow up and gain that confidence of playing in college and handling uh, the, the, the life of college, you know, the academic side, the social side, and the football side, and what's expected out of him. So, you know, Chris has done a phenomenal job. He's a great character kid. So it, it was great to see Chris have that breakout game. But, you know, again, he puts a lot of hard work in during the week, um, is, is having a better understanding of what we're asking him to do um, in, in terms of running the football and, and seeing things in his cuts. And it all came in that second half. And, and you know, you know, it was just really good to see, and he really grew up, I thought, in those last 30 minutes against her sinus. Let's talk about the other side of the ball, and you've gotten a great deal of production from Kevin Bracken and Ricky Sinek, linebacker and defensive back. Talk about their play. 
Absolutely. Uh, two great kids, Steve. I mean, Kevin Bracken has been a vocal leader for us, without a doubt. He's that high-energy kid every day that comes to practice that just loves playing the game of football. Um, you know, certainly he has put himself in great positions for, for success. But, but the best thing about Kevin is that he understands what's expected of that whole front seven. So not only is he putting himself in great positions, he's making sure the D-line's lined up right. And guys, as around him are. So he has great perspective of what we do on defense and how people are trying to attack us, which, again, shows up on Saturdays because of his production. And uh, Ricky sending again, a safety for us, um, you, you know, comes out of a great program in high school. We recruited him, you know, stepped in. Uh, unfortunately, his freshman year had an injury, so he sat out that whole year. Really became a student of the game, which, which helped him on the mental side. Um, you know, and again, his hard work during the week has shown on Saturdays, and, and Ricky does a great job in the secondary. And those guys, we put a lot on their plate back there um, and putting us in the right coverages and checking us in and out of blitzes and things like that. And, uh, you know, Ricky's that coach on the field. I mean, we, we have a great relationship, and I personally get to coach him, which is a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, we put a lot in his hands, but he certainly answers the call for us. Two hungry teams looking for their first win square off this week, Moravian and Susquehanna. What are you seeing about the Crusaders that, uh, on film that impress you? Sure. Number one, I mean, Coach Briggs has been around a, you know, a long time. I mean, you know, I'll certainly age him saying that he recruited me. I have a great deal of respect for Coach Briggs. Uh, he's a great guy. They're well coached. They're a physical football team, and they have talent. And, and I think when you, when you look at Susquehanna, Steve, they're, they're similar to us in that they've put themselves in good positions. Uh, it's been negated by a penalty here, a turnover there, uh, you, you know, giving up a big play here or there on defense. And the same with us here at Moravian. So, uh, you know, I think they're going to be ready to play. Certainly they're coming off the bye just like we are. They're, they're, they're going to be hungry. Uh, it's homecoming up there. So he's going to have those guys, you know, mentally and physically prepared, uh, you know, for this game. I think quarterback's a spot that they've played a couple guys due to injuries. But I think they all have been productive in one way or another. Um, you know, so you know, depending on who we get at the quarterback position, uh, is certainly I think going to dictate how we have to play and defend them. Uh, I think they have two quality tailbacks. Um, you, you know, that are downhill runners. Uh, you know, that I'm sure they're looking for that breakout game like Chris had for us last week. But I think they're very talented and very physical running backs. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, um, you, you know, I know that they lost a couple guys. Um, through graduation in the secondary, but I think they're making up for it at the linebacker and D-line spot. I think they really play physical. They play downhill. I think their, their middle linebacker is a very good player. Um, I think their front four can certainly rush the passer. I think they did it against a very good team against Hopkins a couple weeks ago. Uh, so we'll have a work cut out for us, but you know, I know they'll be prepared. They're very well coached. Uh, we, on, on our side of the ball, or on our side, uh, you know, more specifically just overall, we're going to have to make sure we limit those penalties um, that have hurt us in the past. We certainly have to take care of the football, which we were able to do against Ursina, so hopefully we, we can build on that. Um, and then defensively, we can't let up the big play. Uh, you know, we have to make sure that, that we don't gift wrap anything and, and give something up. So we have to be mentally in the right spots before the ball snaps so we can physically play a little bit better on, on defense right now in the back half. Moravian coach Jeff Buxton, thanks for joining us inside the huddle. Best of luck against Susquehanna this weekend. Thanks, Steve.